Welcome back to Stephen Nice Show. I want to remind you all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, our official website, StephenNiceShow.com. Linnea, where can they follow you on your Instagram? Uh, I am Linnea Love everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, my website is all I'm everywhere. Uh-huh. And what about you, Aaron? First name, last name, Cosby, everywhere. Hey, Ron Cosby. You just had a birthday, right? Yeah. Just, it just passed. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Well, 50 cents better. Take it easy with Mama Kim. The iconic uh, female rapper once again proved that she has no problem dragging him to filth if needed. On Thursday, 50 Cent accused Little Kim of dissing Nicki Minaj's title. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no. You said it this like three, three or four times. What's the man's name? 50 Cent. 50, 50, 50, 50 cents. <laughs> you, you're saying 50 cents. Like literally like two quarters. Thank you. 50 cents. So anyway, 50 cents <laughs> accused Lil Kim of dissing Nicki Minaj's toddler son, Papa Bear. But he didn't But he didn't quit there. 50 also uploaded a comparison picture between Little Kim and a white owl and spoke, uh, spoke foul about her daughter's eye condition. Um, he pretty much... so. Pretty much um, Little Kim, she had teased of a new uh, single um, with a female rapper. People thought it was going to be Nicki Minaj and up being Megan Thee Stallion. It's a remix of her song, Plan B. And so on the song, uh, Little Kim raps about, she says, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you's a bitch, your father's a bitch, your brother's a bitch, keep acting like this, and your son's going to be a bitch. They think users... They think they're users, but they're useless. That's what she rapped about. Now, 50 Cent, 50 Cent, <laughs> he took the Instagram and, and said that she was talking about uh, Nicki Minaj's son. And so Kim said, I never said a word about anyone's child. Please feel free to listen to the song where we are clearly talking about an ex to try and twist my words to have, to have a, an excuse to take digs at my child is disgusting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm one of the most dis disrespectful legends in the game, but you will not come for my child. Lil' Kim says 50 uh, created a false narrative, pleads with uh, Cuban Link to reconsider dating him. So she um, uh, at his girlfriend and said, you are a gorgeous, sophisticated, intelligent woman, but being with someone who openly and comfortably attacks children is a bad look. Get out while you can, girl. Anyone who knows me knows even if you are my enemy, I would never say anything about anyone's child. Kids are off limits. So Kim um, says 50 uh, can relate to the verse because he's a bitch nigga. <laughs> um, Kim pressed even further into 50's neck uh, with no mercy and another clap back on Instagram. So, um, but almost two hours after the release, Nikki seemingly compared coverage of the Little Kim 50 Cent exchange to coverage of her new remix. Notice how they post only about bullshit. Shout out to everyone supporting the song and women who bodied. Uh, they can't do no campaign for us, child. We got to get out, get it out of the mud. And so her fans, um, they respected Nikki's response and said female rap unity only when only when their pets can benefit from it lol other than that let's act like we don't see it actually nikki said that but her her um fans did like her response was positive so 50 is known for trolling people he's known for getting these online debates with other celebrities and and uh and i saw one interview one time he said because it's fun Aaron, at some point, is it too much or is this what he does? Man, a part of me thinks that all of this was already pre-planned just to get attention, just to get clicks, so, so, so that people would actually listen to the song to, you know, to get clicks. Um, I, I, I wouldn't put anything past people nowadays. Like, I wouldn't. I would not be surprised if that was part of the plan. However, if it was not, I have to applaud Lil' Kim. She took the um, high road. Um, when it comes to someone's child, 
I could easily see somebody, you know, going in on him. And right, rightfully so. But for her, you know, she was like, you know what? Nah, higher, I'm, I'm, I'm classier than that. And, um, and I'm, I'm just not gonna, gonna go there with you. So hats off to her. Um, but Fiddy, I don't know, he's, he's always kind of putting himself in to women's business every now and then. I don't know. I, that's not, not a good look. Especially with a person's child, children off limits. Period. Point blank. Off limits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But now, what are your thoughts on uh, Kim's response to to Fiddy? Um, she responded accordingly. Like, listen, even if it, even if something was planned, plan it without including someone's children. Period. Yeah. Um, you know, we talk. We uh, we've talked about. Uh, as artists being censored Mm -hmm. you do things a certain way whatever your intent is is never someone's understanding I'm not responsible for what you understand Mm -hmm. I know what my intent is um and all she can do you know is do what she did you know she called him out on it um and I guarantee some people probably said something, you know, behind closed doors about it too. I will say this disclaimer, 50, if you're looking for an actress, I'm here. This is work, <laughs> boo. So I'm going to talk about you. Anyway, moving forward. Uh, yeah. So distasteful, but I, I, there's always a running theme when it comes to, and I hate to say it, certain black men disrespecting black women real strong just real strong just out here disrespecting us in these streets Mm -hmm. and i don't like it i don't like it at all but that song when hit number one so (laughs) keep on talking about it exactly Exactly. yeah 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 bad publicity is still publicity. publicity yeah and it gets people listening and talking. So, right. But and look, her husband uh, as told Fifty to keep to keep the child's name out the mouth. Okay, oh, that oh. that was my next question. I was gonna be, I yeah. was gonna ask where mm-hmm. was Lil Kim's daughter's father at? Like, yeah. was has he? Because you probably had to calm him down. He probably right. wanted to handle it another way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, right. Yeah. He, okay. he definitely spoke out. Definitely spoke out. All right, well, back in July, Latin star Ricky Martin faced sexual abuse allegations from his own nephew after it was alleged that the two had a sexual relationship. In the end, Ricky won the case against his nephew after a restraining order was filed, was filed, had been withdrawn. Now, Nikki has fi- Nikki. Ricky has filed a $20 million lawsuit against his nephew following the allegations. According to documents obtained by TMZ, Ricky filed the lawsuit against his nephew, Dennis... Yadel Sanchez Martin on Wednesday in San Juan after he says his nephew is trying to assassinate his reputation. Ricky claims that after the restraining order had been withdrawn, Dennis began to message him on Instagram threatening to assassinate his reputation and integrity unless he handed over some money. Ricky claims that prior to the restraining order, Dennis bragged about his nephew and used to flood him with several messages for months. Ricky claims that it was obvious the messages were made by a, manip- a maladjusted individual. Um, things reportedly continued to turn for the worse, as Ricky claims Dennis posted his phone number on social media and then created an Instagram account for one of his children. Ricky says that he has, lo- he has lo- lost a lot due to the false allegations made by Dennis and now wants at least $20 million to make up for what he has lost. He continued to share that Dennis has made him and his family feel unsafe in Puerto Rico and uh, is asking a judge to declare that Dennis withholds, withholds from uh, contacting him and his family. It's previously reported back in July, Dennis dropped charges against Ricky after accusing him of sexual abuse and harassment and then withdrew the restraining order he filed against the singer. Lanier. So I didn't. I hadn't realized that the that the case had been, that Ricky had won the case. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, I didn't even know I got to that point, but do you, what do you think about 
Ricky retaliating with this lawsuit of twenty million dollars against the nephew. As he should. And I'm gonna say this. Oh Jesus. When you make a decision to either stop enabling people and stop the money train and or you don't the one time you don't do something for people and you got money, it's gonna be a problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even your own family will hurt you. Don't even have to be true. It's been put out there. He filed, withdrew everything. Mm -hmm. You went through all that, withdrew everything, but he was sliding in Ricky Martin's DMs, threatening him. Mm -hmm. But you, but you're scared? Yeah. You in fear of your life. That's what I don't understand. Like, those things shouldn't be able to get out like that. And because a lot of stuff is put, like as soon as you file a restraining order against someone, right? Yeah. You get a temporary restraining order. It's automatically on that person's record. Even if you go to court for a final restraining order and it gets dismissed, that person still has to get that temporary BS expunged. Yeah. off their record it's on there mm-hmm. it's on there i don't know what this gonna do for him and he got kids right i mean he got kids so you drink like they i think the nephew created a page of his kids or something yeah, yeah. like you putting his kids in danger mm-hmm. somebody who does that you got ulterior motives and it's called money yeah. I don't care what you say. Because mm-hmm. the kids ain't got nothing to do with it. Yeah. Between you and him. Exactly. So. And like you said, you know, I had read about the allegations, but I never knew that Ricky won the case. But once it's out there, you know what I mean? That's all people know. That's oh, yeah. the good part, though. That's the good part, Stephen. They're not going to yeah. tell you the good. They're not going to publicize. The, they're not going to publicize the fact that he won. The, sensa- the what do you call it? The sensationalization uh, is in the drama and the bullshit part yeah. in the French. Yeah. That's where that's where it's at, and that's where they know the um the attention span of yeah. the internet is in the drama. Yep, yep. Uh, Aaron, what are your thoughts on this case? Um, if if I was Ricky, I would distance myself. Well, not even distance myself from him. He is nothing to me. I will, goodbye. You know, I, we we we're not family. Um, but then, since that's his his nephew, I guess that's either his his sister's child or his brother's child. And Anybody attached that to the him last name is brother's child. I'm assuming. What you say? Anybody attached to him gets cut. Exactly. Exactly. So if they support that whatever bye i'm done yeah 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 so and 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 if that means that i have to with withdraw myself from pretty much all my family so so be it i, I got kids that's mm-hmm. my focus are my children and their well-being mm-hmm. that's it so um yeah um suing him yeah yeah you don't race on it's called in law you know let me say this term punitive Damages. Mm-hmm. You better go, law. You Come better. Go. <laughs> it's to it's it's to punish folks so that they don't do that again and again, or and that somebody else doesn't care. think about doing it in the future because mm-hmm. somebody else might be crazy enough to try to sue yeah. a a a rich family member and making up some um some lies and, and BS. But once they see, oh shoot, Ricky Marks nephew tried that shit and he ended up having to you know spend 20 million dollars mm-hmm. i ain't gonna do that because i ain't you know so yeah so yes yeah, sue is it sue absolutely punitive damages and defamation of character come on yep. Adam. yeah that's true and yes. you know we, we see this over and over where celebrities sometimes their families will take advantage of them their close circle will take advantage of them i just watched the elvis movie which I've been talking about movie reviews I hadn't seen, but I finally saw it. 
and just to see how his family soaked him dry. You know what I mean? Like he was paying for everything. And um, even his father, like the way he kind of handled that situation, you know, it wasn't about Elvis's best intention. It was about making sure he got the money. Um, Elvis, in the movie, I'll just real quick scene, he overdosed right before the show. Mm-hmm. And his manager said, the only thing that we need to do is get him on that stage. And so they brought him back from the overdose, you know, gave him one of them shots. Next night he's on stage. He shouldn't have been on stage. You know what I mean? So um, anyway, it's just interesting how these how these families do their loved ones, so-called loved ones over some money. I mean, how many, how many people do Joe Jackson, Ike oh. Turner, the chick Jody McGuire's a creedy, the Nickelodeon chick that's been going uh-huh. around with her. Yeah. Book. She said her mom, she said her, her mom, mom. You know, her brother take showers together when she was 11. Yep. Like and had her on diets at 11 where she was, she, she developed uh, bulimia. And uh, I mean, it's like, yeah. Where Britney Spears, look, look at Britney uh-huh. Spears, uh-huh. Amanda, I forget, Amanda. Bynes, one of them. Yeah, Amanda Bynes. Uh-huh. Look at those two. Yep. Yeah, you know I mean, they, they've been in conservatorships. Britney's out of hers. Amanda Bynes is still in hers. Uh-huh. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that stuff that we didn't even know. Like they fighting just to have their independence. Right. <laughs> like, right. But they getting put Britney was put to work during her conservatorship to keep that money train keep flowing money train. Mm-hmm. for them yeah. people. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, our last story. So one of the most prestigious Ivy League schools in the country is taking a big step to offer financial support for students from lower income families as Princeton University just announced its latest plans. It just confirmed that Princeton University plans to cover the college costs for students from families earning less than $100,000 a year. New York Post, uh, in a, in a expect, unexpected large expansion of its existing financial aid policies, Princeton University has just announced that it will cover again, the students that make less than $100,000, their families, and will have their entire college costs covered, meaning they will pay nothing for school, tuition, room, and board. The updated financial aid policies officially take effort for all Princeton University undergrads in the fall 2023 semester. University officials estimate that that underneath the new policy, 1,500 students will receive that financial aid. It should also be noted that 83% of the recent uh, Princeton Princeton students graduated without any college debt. Do you think this is a great thing? You just graduated, uh, Aaron. Uh, what do you think about this? I wish I was. I wish I uh, attended Princeton like now. <laughs> real man. Um, anytime students can come out of college debt free mm-hmm. or as close to debt free as possible, I am all for it. Yeah, I applaud this. Um, uh, other schools need to follow suit. <clears throat> How reverse? Um, you know, like they, yes, yes. So I'm all, I'm all for this. Um, I kind of feel like there's something maybe in in the fine print that I'm that we might be missing here. But but overall, from what I've heard thus thus far, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lydia, what are your thoughts? All I want is for the current student loans that I have to be forgiven. Yeah. That's all I want. Yeah. I, I ain't never thought about Princeton University. I ain't thinking about Princeton. Listen, just get these student loans up off of me because the sister trying to get a house. Yes. I ain't got time for this foolishness that they got going on. That's all. Yes. Joe, release them applications for this student loan forgiveness. So I go ahead and fill out 25 of them and getting my life together, I would so appreciate it. Thank you and God bless you. Absolutely, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, before we go, Lanier, you had an announcement you wanna make? So, next week, I am on a panel at the Prince George Count, no, Prince George Film Festival in Maryland. I am going to be a speaker. I'll be talking about my crowdfunding experience for my film Providence. So I have to thank my homegirl Tiffany Yancey yes. for that connection and to Tressa Smallwood, who is the 
like most amazing, um, just hardworking producer uh, who owns Megamize Media. She is like the dom of that Maryland, D.C. area. She has it on lock. Tressa was the one who recommended me to be a speaker. And I'm so honored and so grateful. So I'm going to be there all weekend in Maryland. But I speak next Saturday at Bowie University, um, a historically Black college. So I'll be going on in the afternoon from 4.15 to 5.30. And I'm going to be side by side with Chuck and Bree West. They are mega producers as well. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm excited. That is awesome. And Congratulations. Thank you. So, Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I will see everybody next week in Maryland. I'm there all weekend for the festival. I'm going to everything. So if I you see you me, don't be trying to run up on me because I might mace you. But if you <laughs> walk over to me nicely, then we might be able to talk a little bit. So. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. You're doing amazing. Well, listen, I want to thank you both for Hot Topics. Aaron, thanks for joining us. Have a great week. And when we come back, well, it's sports, but Aaron, actually, Aaron's standing on for sports right back after this.